So we're going to begin our sort of discussion of problem solving with a review of some basics. Uh, we're going to start here with percents. Uh, so we got 243 people out of 400 in a survey saying that they like dogs. What percent is this? So remember, percent means literally out of 100 or per cent. Uh, cent meaning 100. So this is parts per 100. So if we have 243 people out of 400, uh, we could just go ahead and divide that. And if we divided it, we would get a, a decimal value. But we could also write this decimal value as, uh, you know, 60.75 divided by 100. In other words, 60.75 out of 100 or per 100. And that's exactly what a percent is, is it's a per 100 quantity. So this would be 60.75 percent, and this is the percent sign that we use to represent a percent. Now, it's, it's important to note here that these three things, this fraction, this decimal, and this percent, are all equivalent. They all mean exactly the same thing. Uh, they're just different ways of representing the same thing. Now, notice here, going from the decimal to the percent, because we're talking about out of 100, uh, we end up just sort of needing to move the decimal place two digits to the right in order to write the percent. Likewise, if we had a percent and we're going this way, we would just move the decimal two places to the left. Let's look at a little bit more uh, sort of changing representation. So here we've got uh, first one quarter. Now again, we're talking about out of 100 or per 100. Percent. Uh, so one way to do this would be to just say, what is this out of 100? And, and so we could do that by multiplying the denominator by 25 and the numerator by 25 and saying 1 out of 4 is the same as 25 out of 100, and that's 25%. Now notice, of course, we could also accomplish the same goal by literally dividing 1 by 4, which would give us the decimal 0.25 which is 25 one hundredths, or in other words, 25%. Uh, so we can also do this, we can always convert to a decimal first and then into a percent. We can see that again here, if we have 0 0.02 as a decimal and we want to write that as a percent, we can just say that's 2%. Again, we're moving, we're imagining moving the decimal place two places to the right, giving us 2.0 or 2 percent. Now we could also, of course, say that 0 0.02 is 2 one hundredths and do it that way, uh, but this works just fine, just saying, starting with the decimal. Okay, one more here, 2.3. So 2.3, again, moving to decimal place 2 to the right would give us, well, let's see here, 2 to the right would give us 230 percent. Now, percents bigger than 100 are always a little weird to think about, uh, but it's not too bad. For example, imagine you start with 1,000 people. That would be 100% of the people. If you had 500 people, that would be 50%. If you had 2,000 people, that would be 200%. The original 100% plus another 100%. Okay, one more problem before we, uh, before we uh, take a break. So suppose that the sales tax in a town is 9.4 percent. How much tax will you pay on a $140 purchase? Uh, so we need to figure out a percent of the $140. Um, now whenever we're calculating percents like this, we can sort of say, you know, how would I normally calculate a percent? Think about what we did back in this problem. We said, here's the part of the whole and it gives me the percent, or in other words, if I have a part and I divide it by the whole, I get the percent. Written as a decimal, but again, the equivalent percent. And so we could also rewrite this to say the part is a percent of the whole, and to find a percent of the whole, we just multiply the percent times the original amount. So in this case, the purchase is $140, and we want to find 9.4 percent of that purchase price. So we're just going to multiply this by 
9.4%. Now multiplying by, by, by a percent is not very convenient, so usually we rewrite our percent as a decimal because then it's a lot easier to put in our calculators and we can come up with $13.16 in tax. Of course, that's only the tax um, if we wanted to know the final, you know, the price we pay, we would need to add in the tax into the original, uh, and you know, then we can find the total price after tax.